The prophecies were true. This is the Ableton move, people. Take it anywhere, create whenever, trust your instincts. What, what, what does that mean? Standalone, up to four hours of music making per charge. Four tracks, mm, people were quite upset about that one. Session mode, mix and match your musical ideas using moves past to trigger clips. It's pretty much a tiny push. What happened with the push three was, I think they held on to the push three for a while and then technology advanced. So the push kind of feels slow. Like I tried the push three and it was just a little too slow. I feel like this is them kind of trying to save that like standalone because people were like okay is it really you know can i really gig with this is this is this even reliable will it crash i don't know do you guys have to push three let me know but i feel like the no of course is a lot less powerful it makes sense that this would be like this thin because the push three also is thick the push three is super thick the push three is not a portable device so this is their move to a portable device i like it I think it looks great. I went ahead and put my pre-order in to check it out. Four tracks. I was a little, you know, sad about that one, but I can see what they're doing here. Like this is an entry level device, but also I can see a lot of people that are already using Ableton to buy this. Like Ableton fans. Ableton doesn't really give us hardware. So <laughs> this is exciting. This is super exciting. Um, the step sequencer. That's cool. And also there's a row of buttons that get revealed. I didn't know that. Not a, not a row of buttons, a row of like settings. Buttons magically appear. So under the sequencer, there's a second menu that gets revealed. This is one of those devices that you're gonna just get quick with the button combinations. Like that's why the tiny screen. That's what I think. A lot of people are still complaining about the tiny screen, but I mean, if the workflow is good enough where you don't need to even worry about the screen, that's, that's what I want, okay? Dallas, yo. It pretty much is a Dallas device. And dude, they could have just given us this like as a MIDI controller. Like they could have just sold us a MIDI controller, like a smaller version of Push as a MIDI controller for 400 bucks and people would have bought it. Like they could have called this Push Mini. I'm wondering why they didn't do that. Well, actually, no, let me, let me tell you why they didn't do that. Because again, it's a different software that's in the Push 3 and in this. Also, it would have been great to get the pads, the MPE pads on this, but Come on, people. Realistically, you think you were going to get that for less than $500? Hey, maybe they're working on a better version of this already with bigger inputs, like full size quarter inch in and out. Who knows? I think it's cool for what it is. It turns out there was a speaker and I haven't seen any videos of the speaker. I haven't even seen pictures of the speaker. So what's up with that? Why are they hiding it? Is it even worth to mention that it has a speaker? Because you know, you can say something has a speaker, but the only devices that I can stand by that I'm like, dang, this is an amazing speaker. Like they did a great job. This isn't just some gimmick. The MPC Live 2, the speaker on that is amazing. And the Jupiter XM and pretty much any old Casio. Like you can literally sit down with those on your couch and jam and be like, people can be watching TV. People can be doing something else, talking and like you will overpower the room with that. Something like the OP1, eh. So like, how useful is the speaker? Cause I feel like if it was a good speaker, they would've been like, yo, check out the speaker to the sides. I didn't really see that in the video that they made. So, you know, review on the speaker coming soon. Something really cool though that like, um, I'm, I'm hype about this device guys. It's been a minute since I've been hype about something. So you can tell cause I won't breathe. So you have four tracks and yes, that is limiting, but limitations breed creativity. Actually, my next song that I'm dropping is only like three tracks, maybe four. So, you know, but uh, not counting the vocals. So like, I did see the Sonic State review of this and the guy mentioned that like, this is a great thing to like sketch out ideas. This is no in hardware mode. But even as a MIDI controller for Ableton, yo, that's gonna fit so nicely, like right here, right in front of your laptop. It was so awkward to like dedicate that much space, not only space, but money to the push because push three, it's like two grand. The controller version alone is like a grand. I am excited for this because I use Ableton. So if you don't use Ableton, maybe, maybe don't like jump right in. I've been looking for, I've been thinking about getting the push, like the controller for a while, but I just could not dedicate that much space and money to just the controller. But this is not just the controller, which is amazing. So we have four tracks, but the four tracks don't have to be like drums, bass, this, this, right? You can have like two drum tracks and something really, really cool about this. When you sample into it, you can actually chop live, like automatically. So like you can either record and record onto a pad or you can just start chopping like right away. I don't think you can do that on the SP. Yes, of course on the MPC, but so this is more like MPC level type chopping that we're talking about here. Then we're gonna have like so many options per pad for the chopping, like one track for chops, one track for drums, your bass, your keys or synth or whatever, and then yo, 
you got you got like some type of like sampling workflow going on here besides the synth engine so i think this thing has a lot of potential time will tell it gets here in a few days hopefully there's a storm coming here guys so wish me luck that you know nothing goes wrong hopefully i'll see you guys soon i'm excited about this not only as a standalone device but like i said just to like integrate ableton better into my workflow for people that like jam on their piano and just want a simple looper yo basic like I feel like this device fills a lot of gaps in the space and like the music and space and my only like like it's not all pros right like they should have added quarter inch full size like if, but I, that would have definitely brought the price up we're talking probably like if that would have been more like six seven think about it they would have added full size quarter inch ins and outs not even full size mini just give us like 3.5 if you can't fit full size mini in there and maybe I don't know dude four more tracks like that would have been like psh. but could it have handled that much power we're gonna see how fast is this device it looks pretty fast the tutorial that the girl was doing i thought that was a great tutorial um on their original page on the ableton page so make sure you check that out to see if this workflow is for you and if anything if you're not gonna buy this device this is a great reminder to check out the ableton note app because this is what this literally is it's the ableton note app in hardware form and the ableton note app is amazing sounds great so i'm sure the sounds on this are gonna be amazing let's see how the output sounds but it would have been great to have like even a mic input. It doesn't have Bluetooth, but it does have Wi-Fi, so you can like transfer your projects back and forth between Node and Ableton. That's awesome. 64 gigabytes of internal storage, great. No SD card like we saw. And yeah, no pictures of the speaker. So what's up with that, all right? That's it, guys. We're going to wait and see if I'm here. Well, I'll be here and I'll show you guys it. And yeah, music coming, hopefully. Stay fly. Support on Patreon. Love you. Bye.